people. This is the fifth week that I'm coming to you from my bedroom. I've let my standards way down. I have on a t-shirt, Kentucky Derby 142. This year was supposed to have been 146. It's an old t-shirt, but I'm still repping my Kentucky Derby. I really missed it this past Saturday. I have my camera angled around a little bit further this week than I usually do because I don't want you to see my bed. It's not made. I decided that this was going to be the last pretty day that we're going to have for a little while. We're going to have a bunch of rain coming in. So I washed all my sheets and they're currently hanging out on the clothesline. <laughs> so I feel like I'm a little bit of a mess today, but regardless, I'm going to talk to you about vanity cabinets for your bathroom and picking them out. I have a lot of notes on a Google document and I'm going to be looking at it some. So I apologize for that, but I want to remember everything. The biggest thing that I hear people say is they don't know where to buy them. You of course can buy vanity cabinets at a big box store. And when I say big box store, I mean a Lowe's or Home Depot. I'm not wild about that option. You can do it. You can go even buy unfinished ones that sit on their shelves and you can paint them at home yourself. And that's an option and that could be fine. Um, if you're on a really tight budget, I actually, I think it's even more than fine. I think it's really good. I don't know that I would order cabinets from there just because I've done things like that before and it's kind of a hassle. If you're doing a master bedroom and you want to do something that's fancier or a little nicer, then if I were you, I would go to my lo local custom cabinet maker. They make cabinets by hand, but they also generally always sell lines of box cabinets. And box cabinets are kind of what I recommend. So when you call for an appointment, I would just be sure and ask them if they carry box cabinets or not. And if they do, then you're good. Go talk to them. However, before you go talk to them, there are several things that I would have you be prepared on. So I will talk about all those in a moment. First, I want to say another place that is getting to be really popular for cabinets and bathrooms is Wayfair or Build.com. You can get online and order them and sometimes you can get the whole vanity, the top, and it's generally marble or granite, and even sometimes the mirror that matches it comes with it. And those prices can be good. And I've done them before and, and have been happy with what I've gotten. This is the only thing that I will say. They are created to sit on a wall that has no ends to them. So if you, like in my bathroom, I have my vanity and it has a wall on three sides. So there's the two end walls, my sink's in between them, and there's a wall across the back where my mirror is. And if you take one of those kind of vanities that's designed to not set up against a wall and you sit it against a wall, you have this awkward gap. And it's just small enough that it's gonna be a real pain to try to clean or if you wanna repaint your bathroom, how are you gonna get in that spot? So uh, for me, they're not a good option, particularly if it's a bathroom that's gonna get heavy daily use. Now, if it's a guest bathroom that's hardly ever used, then maybe you can get away with it. It's not gonna make repainting it any easier if you eventually do that. I'm sorry, I've got something going on with my eye. But at any rate, those are the main things that, uh, the main places that I would get something from. So the next part that I want to talk about is the things that you need to consider. So one of the things is the height of your vanity. The finished height or the height to the top of your countertop should be 36 inches, which is the same as your cabinets in your kitchen, most likely. That is how tall you should get your vanity in your bathroom. They come shorter and I have seen people order them shorter for like a kid's bathroom. I don't recommend that because the children are going to grow up. You know how quickly they grow up, and I just would not do that if I were you. That's just my advice. You can do whatever you want. The next thing is overlay, and I've got three little clips that I'm going to show you of my bathroom vanities in my house. So in my daughter's bathrooms, we have standard overlay. In my bathroom, I have a full overlay, and in my powder room, I have an inset. So I'm going to show you um, all three of those here in just a second. Let me show you some of the features about this vanity in particular that were cost savings. First of all, the doors and drawers are a standard overlay. That means you can see the frame of the cabinet all the way around the doors and the drawers. The second thing is that the door, the drawers are slab front. So they're just one solid piece of wood where they just routed a 
fancy little edge on them, but this is just one piece of wood where the doors are called raised panels. See how this comes out right here? If this did not have this, it would be called a flat panel door. And actually those are a little bit less expensive. I'm not sure why I went with a raised panel with these. I probably just liked it. It's another surface to dust and to catch gooey things on. So keep that in mind. This is an example of a full overlay vanity. It means that the doors and the drawers, that the faces of them are just bigger. And so you see less of the frame of the cabinet. See how you kind of have to really search to get in there to see it? It's just a lot less of that. So some differences between these cabinets and the last ones that I showed you that had the standard overlay. These doors also have a raised panel, but instead of the doors being a slab like the other ones were, they are also a raised panel. I'll get in closer so you can see that. So let me tell you, this is the actual vanity in my bathroom. The one that I showed you before was in my daughter's bathroom. So if I had it to do over, I probably would choose to do standard overlay in both bathrooms. I paid more money for these and I don't like to dust them. Like when I come in here to dust, I'm gonna grab my rag and just show you. I wanna just stick my finger in there and go. It's a little tight. You know, it's better if you, and I know pulling the drawer out and closing it's not that big of a deal, but when I'm cleaning, I don't want anything to slow me down. Also, I probably would not have done such fancy cabinet fronts. I think these are really pretty to look at. I still do, but all of these little creases, I'm gonna get in here really tight where you can see them. When those get full of dust, because they've got that black down in them, so that is also an extra cost. It is glazing. Glazing's pretty much gone out of style now because we do so much of the shaker cabinets and they don't have anything for the glazing to rest in, but it is a, a traditional look. So if that gets dusty, I mean, you literally have to set your fingernail, cover it up with a rag, set your fingernail in it and go like this and dust all of these places. That's very annoying. I would not make the choice to do that again. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you about these? So I didn't tell you this about the other ones, but it's, I will tell you here because I did the same thing in both of them. So the wood that makes up this cabinet down here and here, I did spring for it to be upgraded to wood plywood instead of chipboard. So inside of the cabinet, so this is a nice hard surface. Oh, and this is a tip that I do. So this is a piece of tile that I put little, um, little felt feet under and I set it in here and I set my bottles on it so that if any of them leak, they won't mess up the wood in my vanity bottom. So my drawers are the wood also, but they don't have dove dovetailing. They are just stapled together. I'm fine with that. Like dovetailing is beautiful, but it's on the side of my drawer that mostly stays closed. I don't feel like I need to pay for that. So it just has little staples right here. They hold together very nicely. I don't have any problems with them, but I do spring to, even if I had gone with the cheaper doors and drawers and all that, I still would have asked what the cost was to upgrade to the plywood versus doing the chipboard. So they'll use a chipboard and then they cover it with something that looks like like wood. It's sort of, I don't know if it's the same thing, but what it looks like is the contact paper that you probably remember your mom covered the bottom of your kitchen cabinets with. It sort of looks like that that's pressed on. It's like a plasticky thing and, and it works okay. But if you're hard on your cabinets at all, they will start to show wear in just a few short years because of that. So I do always upgrade my cabinets. Now, I just used the cheaper hardware. Like I didn't feel like I needed soft clothes on my drawers or my doors, obviously, on my vanity. So that is something in my bathroom I didn't feel like I needed, but it's something that you could I could always add later if I wanted to. I just don't feel like that I'm that fancy. This vanity is the most expensive of all of the vanities that I have in my house, but it's a super small vanity because it's in my powder room, so I felt like I could spring for it. But in my powder room, I've got this brick look going on and I've got some original shiplap. That's, it's pretty rustic actually, because it really is original. And I just knew that I wanted something in here that was a little bit more special that fit the space. 
So I had this vanity made by a local carpenter. Um, it's the woodshed. Joel Steele is the gentleman that made it. He's very talented. He's made a lot of stuff for me. And on top of that, he's just a super nice human being. But this one is what's called an inset door. So see, these are your styles and these are your rails and see how your door sets inside of them. Like this is flush. See how that's flush? It's a very nice clean look. And even this panel for your sink is flush. It's expensive to do though. I'm gonna say that it probably triples the cost over the first vanity that I showed you that had the just standard overlay doors. So this one is also been made out of wooden plywood. It has the back on it. Um, it's got the soft close on the doors. You know, I had it. I had the end done special, like he made me a special end panel. So there's just a lot going on here that was super nice. And working with this old barn lumber is real difficult for them. It's got old nails in it sometimes that is hard on their saws and their equipment. There's a lot of places that are like if I came in here with just my rag to wipe this down, I'm good, my rag's gonna catch on this. So I have to be very careful with it. Some of this will splinter. You know, it's already splintered off right there. But you just, if you want a piece like this, you have to embrace those things. And they are not the fault of the, of the carpenter that made it at all in any way. So this is just a really good look. And I know I knew that I wanted it for in here and I was willing to spring for it. I probably would not ever choose to do this in my guest bathrooms or my children's bathrooms and highly doubt that I would choose to do it in my, even my personal bathroom for my daily use, because I'm, like I say, I'm just don't feel like I'm that precious for somebody that's never, for something that's not ever going to be seen, but I do like it in here. It is seen and I enjoy it when I come in here. So that's the three different types of vanities that I have in my house. And I think it kind of gives you an overview of the things that you need to decide before you go and buy a vanity. Go and talk to anybody about vanities, what you need to decide. When I was showing you the vanity in my bathroom, I showed you how the, the side of the drawers were stapled instead of dovetail. I just realized that I have dovetail in my kitchen, so I wanna show that to you. So I'm gonna pull this drawer out and then I'll show you the side of it. See this, this is called dovetailing. And I kind of forgot that I had it on my kitchen cabinets. I'm really not sure why I do. It's not, it's not a requirement necessarily for me. I have a feeling that my cabinet guy that did these for me upgraded me because he's just a really kind human and we do a lot of business together. But you can tell that the wood that's used on these boxes is not even plywood, it's actually wood. Because if you'll look, you can see the grain of the wood on the end. So that's a pretty nice upgrade. These are box cabinets also, not custom made but box cabinets can have some super good features and for a really good price. So tuck that into your mind. Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about is when you go to talk to somebody about a cabinet vanity for your bathroom, you need to know if you want it to be painted or stained. So if you get a box cabinet and you're looking at paint, you're gonna be limited on colors, but they're typically good colors that they have available. White is always available. Um, they usually have a creamy off-white that I have in my kitchen and I love. Um, they have usually a light gray and a dark gray. Some places have a green, some places have a navy or a darkish blue. So there's options. So you just have to shop around a little bit. Um, stain, you can get all kinds of colors of stain. If you think you want a stained cabinet, you just have to know your budget. If you have a tighter budget, you're gonna wanna look at a birch and if not, then you can move up to a nicer wood, a cherry or an alder or a maple. Maple is kind of midway, I would say kind of in the middle. And maple's popular because it you can get it to look really pretty with a lot of different colors. So maple's probably a good option. Um, let's see here, door style. So you're gonna wanna have some idea of what you want your actual door to look like. So the shaker ones, you're probably have seen a lot of those lately. They are very, very simple. So they're a flat panel with just rails and styles that are real square and kind of thick around it. And they um, are super popular right now and they're not super expensive. They're not the cheapest ones, but they are a very economical door in my opinion. 
the next, uh, the ones that are actually the least expensive look a lot like a shaker, except they do have one little piece of molding. So they're also a flat panel. The rails and styles are square, but they're smaller than a shaker. So where a shaker might be like this wide, just the least expensive door is probably gonna be like this wide. And it has a little piece of molding that runs around it. Personally, I really like it. I'm still using it in some of my houses that I build in Eminence and I really like the door. So that is an option. You can also get raised panel doors and I show you some of that on the clips um, for the overlay. So you have some resources there. So you just kind of have to decide what you want. Construction. So the cabinet can be constructed out of wood or it can be constructed out of a pressed wood. I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. For a lot of cabinets, pressed wood to me is okay. By the time you screw it into studs in the wall, it gets its strength and solidity and it's not going anywhere, it works just fine. For a vanity sink or a, your kitchen sink cabinet, those two really need to be wood because of, they can get water damage pretty easily. And so pressed wood, when it gets wet, it puffs up. You've probably seen that roughness underneath a sink and I'm not a big fan of that. And sometimes water damage is just unavoidable. You'll get a drip or a leak under your sink and you don't know it for a little while. So. If you've got the ability to upgrade to wood, I would recommend that. And, and when I say wood, it's typically usually a plywood. Let's see, which is the next thing? Okay, and then the other thing you're going to think about is what kind of amenities do you want? Do you want soft closed doors on the cabinet, on the doors or on the drawers or both? Just something to think about. Do you want it to have a furniture base? So instead of just having the toe kick, it'll kind of have a, a rounded look and I don't know if you can really even get that with box cabinets, but it's just something to think about. You need to know what it is that you like and don't like and why and what you're willing to pay for. That's what I'm trying to get across. So um, I hope you found all this helpful. And next week, I'm not really sure. I think next week I might either talk about tile or plumbing fixtures. I haven't decided. So if there's one or the other you'd like to see or hear me talk about, let me know and I'd be glad to do it. 